Hi, welcome back. This is really getting really exciting, right? Well, on the last video, we saw how we created a class and we added a method inside the class. Now we need to find a way to actually start using those functionalities, right? So let's go ahead and open our co-editor. What we are, what we will be doing on this uh, lecture here is instantiating, instantiating. A, we're going to create an instance of this class, all right? We're going to make this work. Basically, we are going to be calling the functionality inside the class, all right? So we know that we have this class here called car, right? And you can call this an object already because we have the functions, right? We have, we will have the properties there, but we don't have them yet. But the way we create the object is we need to instantiate it, this class here, all right? And I will show you in a minute how we do that. Let's first, before I confuse you, let's first do a save as here. And let's do class underscore three, all right? And right. They have a whole bunch of different terms terms for the things that we do in programming and you need to learn a couple of them. All right? So that way you can be on sync to what's going on, right? So we have the class here and we're checking methods, but right now we don't need to do that. Let's just take this off. All right. So we created a class right here. We created a functionality. How do we start using this functionality? That is the question, right? That's the million dollar question. Well, very simple. We use the name of this here, but we first use a keyword called new. And then we use the name with parentheses. Boom. Done. That's it. That way we can start using this. Now we need another way of actually holding this value here. This is very simple to when we create arrays or create functions to that we save into variables and do things with it very similar to that so what I want to do is create a variable I'm gonna use a variable to hold this this class here with all the functionalities inside and I use some terms that uh, they are very normal right basically what we were, what we will be doing is creating an instance of this because we can create many of them so I'm gonna actually call this let's just call this all right let's just all right let's call the BMW all right you know I'm so descriptive with my names and so now I created an object this is an object now all right so we we created an instance of this class here but you can actually call this an object right because an object is you know a group of data related that uh, you know by a common theme right so this is an object. Now that we have this BMW object, we can go ahead and you know what? We can create another one. We can call this, I don't know, Mercedes. And that's for Mercedes Benz. I like nice cars. What can I say? Mercedes Benz right there. All right. So we created another instance of that object of this class. I'm sorry. And you can call these objects if you want. And how do we start using this? How do we start using the, the functionality? How do we start moving the wheels, all right, of the BMW, for example? So right now, what I want to do is I want to move the wheels of that BMW, right? And this is just a, a figure of speech. We know that we can't move the wheels with an echo. But imagine that we have this whole, whole bunch of functionality inside this method here. How do we activate it? Very simple. We grab the BMW, right? We use it minus and the arrow greater than symbol. And we say, you know what? Activate. Move those wheels now, BMW. Boom. And the wheels are moving right here. Okay? This is how you start using it. So you grab the object, the name of it, the instance, and you say move wheels. All right? So we have that. What about this other Mercedes, what are we going to do with this car? Are we going to race? Yes, why not? Let's race. So I'm going to grab this one too. And I'm going to say, you know what? I need you to race. Man. You, you need to go with this guy too. So let's go ahead and let's, first, let's use the same thing we did here. Mercedes and then move wheels. Boom. Mercedes right in front of it. It went down. I don't, I, BMW is going to win this race. It's behind right now, but he's going to win. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's win. 
all right oops we saved it there we're supposed to save it on the on the file here I don't know why I keep saving that there there we go so BMW went in front of it again and so on and so on and so on you get my point all right we can call this many times and we can create as many instances as we want does this, this is how we can start using the functionality inside that class all right so anyways hopefully you were able to learn a lot on this one here and if you have any questions I'm here 24 7 well not 24 7 but I'm here for you so dear students I know this was really exciting for you because it was really exciting for me now you might not see a lot of functionality but keep this in mind we are actually creating objects now we are actually creating functionality that is that you can use to create even games right uh, there are a lot of programming languages out there that you could use like Java or C or any other language to create really 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 high definition games but anyway PHP is a really great language to learn and this will help you knowing OOP is gonna help you create really advanced websites alright so anyway thank you so much for watching this lecture and I'll see you in the next one